Welcome to Buy the Books, the podcast helping business owners navigate the complex world of business, tax, and bookkeeping. Now to the owner and president of Sakhalin, Lindsay Klein. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. This is Lindsay Klein with Sakhalin, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. And I'm here today with Chris Gross of Free Donation. Hello, thank Lindsay. Thank you for joining me today. Yes, thank you for having me. So topic that you actually came up with yes was about hiring employees what to look for how to do it yes is that kind of what you had in mind yeah so I, i'm trying to put myself in in your shoes uh -huh. this is a big deal hiring employees um you know this isn't like if you've got some kind of management job in a company and you're hiring somebody and you're just handing responsibilities over to them. They don't work out. You know, you go find somebody else. I'm thinking as a business owner, when you hire somebody, you are cutting out a big chunk of your business. Yes. You know, this isn't somebody else's business anymore that you're handing over. Right. This is your business that you are putting in the hands mm -hmm. of, of somebody. And so I can imagine you probably felt this way. And I can imagine other business owners are thinking the same. This is a big deal. This makes me a little nervous doing this. So I just wanted to pick your brain. What are, what are some tips? What are some things you look for when you're hiring an employee? Which is something that I actually am working through and am in the process of doing. Yeah. So I just hired my eighth employee. Wow. And so I am, this is a work in progress. Like I, my process now is different from when I started. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning, right? Yeah. So hopefully I can help other business owners um, kind of work through what I've learned. And especially in my industry, we do bookkeeping. We see people's confidential, yeah. personal information. Yep. Like I can't get this wrong. So it, the hiring process is so important. So background checks goes without saying. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important, especially in our industry, must do the background check, right? So that's just base level. Most employers do that. Um, but then beyond that, you've got to have the right fit. There might be someone that is a genius exceptionally good at their job, but just simply is not a good fit. And there's a lot of reasons why that might be the case. So it's not just about skill set. It's not just about experience. It's not just about education. Even if all those boxes are checked, it just may not be a good fit for your company. So a large part of my hiring process is figuring out, do we get each mm -hmm. other? Yeah. Yeah. Is what, your priorities are in life, does that align with what we're doing? Yeah. Are the values of this company and of me as an owner, does that align with your values? Um, because having a misalignment there is just going to cause frustration on both part. So, and, and, and on that real quickly, I've been part of both throughout my career. I've had very good working cultures, very mm -hmm. good you know, that kind of working relationship with people around me, you know, one right now, Frito and I work so well together. And I think it's so important to be able to work well with somebody and, and mm -hmm. be able to butt heads in a good and a respectful way. At my last job, we had that, we had such a great culture where I was, but I, I've had a, a boss in my past where the culture wasn't there. The mm. fit wasn't there. You know, it was almost painful to have just regular conversations with each other. And one thing that I think is so important about that and why I love that that's such a priority for you is, like you mentioned, they could be a, a great worker, a mm -hmm. great employee just in the vacuum. But if you don't get along, if that culture isn't there, the productivity drops. Yes the amount of things you can accomplish in your business in day to day just isn't there. And so I can see where it, it would be worth it to say, well, maybe this guy doesn't have as, as much experience. He doesn't have as much skill as the other person, but I'm counting on the 
his attitude and his culture to bump him up a level, yeah. whereas the person next to him would get knocked down because yeah. he's not a fit. Oh, you're right. Absolutely. I mean, attitude, willingness to learn, coachability, yeah. those are all things that are invaluable. Because at the end of the day, if your skill set isn't there, but you are eager to learn and you're hungry for it, that's going to get you well beyond the person that has all the experience, but yeah. really doesn't want to learn. Doesn't yeah. it? Not very coachable. It's definitely invaluable to find that kind of person. And we've talked about this on, on a previous podcast, but it almost goes to that, that scarcity mindset again, mm -hmm. doesn't it? And yes. so that's something that, that you would have to avoid. Um, have you had any of those, problems where you've been through the hiring process or maybe you've you've seen it before you were a business owner where those mindsets didn't match up and you could tell pretty quickly that hey this is this is not going to be a good fit yeah oh yeah absolutely i yeah. mean a lot of problems that i've seen where there's employee drama you yeah, know with yeah. you know may or may not involve the boss maybe it's just with other coworkers. um there's just a misalignment of values a lot of times and that's one thing that I love is when someone reaches out to me, they see my job ad, but they reach out to me personally because I put all of my information in my ads and my ads are very unorthodox. <laughs> um, I, I started when I first started posting job ads, I just kind of took a template I found online and started filling in the gaps. And about halfway through it, I was like, this is not me. Yeah. Yeah. And I scrapped the whole thing and I just started completely from scratch and just started speaking from the heart to talk about my philosophy when it comes to employee empowerment and culture and clients. I have always dreamed of having a company that was as much about employee empowerment as it was about service to clients and in practice, not just here's our culture statement, but actually a company that practiced that bookkeeping is just our vehicle to make that happen. So I talk about that and what that actually means to me in tangible, practical terms. For example, whatever my employees' goals are, I want to help them achieve that. Their goals become my goals. And so I talk about that in my job ad. Whatever it is you want to do, even mm -hmm. if it's to open your own bookkeeping company in the same city in competition with me, let me help you. I have a lot I could teach you in that regard. Yeah. Go for it. If I have that kind of mindset where my employees know at the end of the day, I care more about them wow. and empowering them to achieve everything that they can achieve, that's going to go so much further than me having that scarcity mindset that you referenced yeah. where it's like, well, I got to hold some things close to the chest. I want to make sure, and I've had employers like this. I want to make sure they don't ever go in competition with me or take this knowledge elsewhere or take it to my competition. It's a completely different mindset. When you have an abundant mindset, you can say, you know what, whether you go to the competition, you open your own competition. It's okay. Yeah. Let me help you empower you to do whatever it is that you want to do. Let me come alongside you. I'm going to be your team member. So I talk about that in my job ads. And this is a very, a lot of my philosophy about employees is really me deciding I want to be the anti-employer employer, everything. <laughs> I want to be the employer I never had. And I yeah. decided if I was yeah. going to work for the employer I never had, I was just going to have to be that employer. <laughs> so I, a lot of the times when I talk about my philosophy, which, you know, this is something I'm passionate about, a lot of my philosophy is radical. And I've had people tell me it's never going to work. What you're talking about is never going to work. And even telling me some of the things that I've mentioned that I want to do, they tell me I would never want to work for you. I could never work in an environment like that because it's radically different from what we see bar and large in corporate America. I love whenever someone reaches out to me personally and tells me how my ad touched them, touched them, that they got it. Yeah. That is going to be infinitely more powerful and memorable to me as an employer looking to hire someone because I know, okay, they saw what I want to do. It touched them. They're, they're seeing the vision. They get it. That means culturally, we're on the same page rather than a person that's still stuck 
in the mindset of most corporate America, very competitive, scarcity mindset type. I don't want that kind of employee. I want the one that sees what I'm trying to do and is on board with it, right? So that goes a long way. And so I think as an employer, one of the the most important things I've done is put my information, put my LinkedIn out there, put my email out there, see who contacts you. And I don't know why more employers don't do that. A lot of times they'll even keep the name of the company anonymous wow. or you don't even yeah. know who who's posting the job ad. I, I personally feel like that's a mistake. Give them an opportunity to see your LinkedIn, mm-hmm. to see your social media, to to email you personally and see who takes advantage of that. Because that tells you a lot, too. If someone takes the initiative to contact you personally, that takes guts. I mean, that tells you this person is next level. Yeah. They're not just applying to as many applications as they can and moving on. This person actually took the time to reach out to me by mm-hmm. name and tell me why it spoke to them, why they want this job. So that's one big thing I've started doing. Also, testing for cognitive ability. That's one thing that I've found to be really important, especially in my industry. Somebody that um, may not necessarily have the skill set but rates very high on their cognitive ability, they will learn quickly. So that's one of the tests that I've started giving to potential candidates is is cognitive tests, you know, where they have to reason and and do logic, you know, problem solve through things to see cognitively, are they able to learn and work through problems? That goes a long way. And I find that those people that I focused on that with, I can teach them something, they get it. It, It's it's not a long learning process with them, which is great for me as an employer when I can teach something one time and they can run with it. Hugely valuable. Yeah. Um, Another thing is personality tests. Um, You know, depending on the job, a lot of times I'm hiring for the same position, you know, bookkeepers. Um, So I kind of know the the personality profile. And we talked about this in the last episode where bookkeepers typically – we like all the boxes filled, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was talking about how much it bugs me when I'm filling out a form and there's some box that doesn't apply to me and I have to leave it blank and it drives me crazy, right? Yeah. That's the kind of personality you want doing your bookkeeping. Yeah. You want right. the bookkeeper that can't leave anything blank, that wants to make sure all the ducks are in the row, that all the T's are crossed, yeah. right? Probably a bookkeeper that's more focused on... Because you okay, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. Last week, I was at a conference with a lot of bookkeepers. I mentioned this. There's about four hundred hundred of us in the <laughs> yeah, room. Yeah. Um. At one point, one of the speakers asked, "Is there any bookkeeping business owners in the room that enjoy networking, sales, marketing, that aspect of the business? How many out of probably about four hundred bookkeepers do you think stood up? Um, one. <laughs> I stood up. Yeah." Because I do enjoy that. Um, but yeah, it was very minimal. There right. was maybe 20 wow. out of 400 wow. that yeah. stood up. So not many of the type of personality that gravitates towards bookkeeping are going mm, to be yeah. your life of the party, you know, networking gurus. Yeah. Um, typically, the type of personality that wants to do bookkeeping, enjoys bookkeeping, is happy with that, is not going to be the kind of personality that wants to get out there and party. So there's, you just learn, okay, for the type of position this is, this is a good personality fit. And there's multiple layers to that. So that's another thing that you can do to see, is this a good fit? Personality tests. Um, Reference checks. Oh, yeah. Reference checks. Yeah. And that's not a fun thing, right? Most people don't like to call random people, Mm -hmm. ask uncomfortable questions. And the person on the other line, because I've been there too, as the reference person that's being called and like, okay, what what can I say? Especially if you were an employer and they worked for you, there's some legality issues there, right? Not a fun process. So I found a website that will do all of this via email. They... you find out from your potential candidate what uh, who they want to have as a reference. You get their email addresses. You send out a blast email, and you t- and and what they do is they tell the the reference that it is not um, their name isn't on there. It's completely anonymous, so they can go on there, 
fill out the information. It's all web based. Yeah. Um, they don't have to give their name or anything like that. And then what happens to me as the person hiring, I get an email once the, the ref, there's enough of them because there has to be a, enough of them that they can stay anonymous. Once there's enough responses, I get an email saying you can print your report now. So it shows me no names. It just shows me a report of what people said, what for, each, said. for each question. That has been great. That's awesome. Because I no yeah. longer have to have those awkward conversations <laughs> like, you know, where you're asking personal information about somebody's work ethic and, yeah. you know, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So that has been great. I love that tool. Um, so that's another thing I do just to see, you know, it's and they can put as many people in that in that. Um, database to to send reference request. And so it's interesting to see, okay, how many people can this person come up with and yeah. what responses yeah. do you get? You know? And I think that can be such a big one too, because the, the people who are going to get good references, those are the people who, you know, are going to have the good work ethic, the, you know, regardless of what my coworkers are doing, regardless of how much work I have to do, regardless of what's going on, in the business, I'm going to give it, you know, my 100% mm -hmm. every day. And that can be such a reminder for those out there who maybe you want to be a business owner one day. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're looking for a new job. Why that that work ethic is is so important. You know, I going into my first job out of college, um, I had listed maybe two, three references. It was at least two. And when I you know, I, I knew about the reference thing. Hey, you, you, there's certain things they can't say. Yeah. I just thought it was, well, I want to see that they have names. I remember going in for my job interview and he, and my, who would become my future boss told me, yeah, I called this person and this person and had like a 15 minute conversation with each. Wow. And so it's one of those things where I wasn't expecting that, but that's where you, you as a, a person, your personality that comes into play I can see how that would be so important. And if I was hiring people, I would make that such a such a big deal. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think it's a very important aspect of it is is finding out what other people that have yes. worked with that person have to say. And I think that step often gets skipped because people don't want to have those conversations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So use an online tool where you don't have to have those yes. awkward conversations. Yeah. Another one is skill assessments. Obviously, I'm big on the assessments, right? Personality, <laughs> yeah. cognitive, um, and but skill assessments. Wh you know, whatever the job is, I actually talked to a, a CPA recently who told me about a test that she gives all her potential candidates. And mm. as soon as she told me about it, I was like, oh, "Will you send <laughs> that to me?" <laughs> it's great, yeah, because it. It, you and especially since it is all um, in big ambiguous, so there le you leave a lot up to decision making, right? Yeah. So there's you know twenty ways to skin a cat. It tells you to skin the cat, right? But it doesn't tell you how, how to skin to the it. cat. So you yeah. need to see um, their decision making process and how they go about things. Are they one of those people who values efficiency, yeah. who will find a technology tool to get it done right away? Or are they one of those that just take the longest amount of time because they're doing it very manually and not trying to think about a way to make it more efficient? You know, so you get to see things like that. It has been great. And I literally set up Zoom uh, video conference call. I don't even give them the instructions for the test. It's it's an Excel file. And in our case, it's bookkeeping, right? So it's got like 12 instructions of what to do. They have to set up an online or a, a um, QuickBooks online trial account. They have just raw data in an Excel spreadsheet and they have to figure out how to bring that data into QuickBooks, yeah. Yeah. how to code it. They have to create financial statements. They have to send the financial statements to me as the client and give recommendations or ask questions or whatever needs to be done like they're actually doing this for a client. So there's a lot of ways to do that. When you have a spreadsheet full of transactions, now it can be brought over automatically. QuickBooks has a way to do that. Yeah. Will they figure that out or will they enter them manually? Like this is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. And, you know, I know this is like a nerve wracking process for candidates, but I know at the end of the day, if someone can nail that 
and I can see their decision making process is great. They yeah. get it. They're coding things properly. They're efficient. They're technology savvy. This relationship is going to go a whole lot better than if I'm having to train all of those things, you know? Yeah. So yeah. whatever it is that you value as an employer, figure out a test like that where you can actually see them in action. It's been fantastic. I know my candidates don't think it's fantastic, <laughs> but I think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that would be another thing is skill assessments. And something I do that's not very traditional, and some people think I'm crazy for doing it, but I will take candidates that I'm serious about that have already gone through all these other things. Yeah. I'll take them out to lunch or dinner yeah. and have a meal with them. Spend some concerted time and get them out of the office element. Yeah. Sometimes even they'll bring a spouse. So I think that that is a great way to get to know them a little bit deeper, to see them in an, an environment outside of work. Yeah. You see how they treat a waiter. And if their spouse is there, you see how they treat their spouse. Wow. Wow. Um, things like that. You know, you see how professional, how do they eat? How do they, how professional are they? Do they have manners? Things like that. Because they're digging into the chicken wings yeah. with both hands. <laughs> you know, because a lot of the bookkeepers I hire, they're face to face with my clients. Uh -huh. So how professional are they going to be with them? You know, and I think when you take someone out of the office environment, get them a little bit off kilter yeah. in that sense, where you're taking them out of that unfamiliar environment where they know they have to be professional yeah. into an environment that they are in every day. It changes things. Right. So that's something I do too, just to observe, get to, and a lot of times they'll put their guard down and you can get to know them on a deeper level than you would sure. being in the office. Yeah. So that's another little trick I do a lot of times. Well, if anything, Lindsay, you're not traditional. I, no. think, I think we can say no. that. So you going through your process of hiring, I'm going to make you narrow this down. What's What's like been your one big thing that is a plus for employees who have applied. And what is the one big thing that makes you say, no, this person is a, is a big no. So what's the one big positive and the one big negative that you have seen during your recent, you know, go through of, of hiring employees? So do you mean as in what is it that they do that's the most in the plus column for them versus in the minus column for them. Yeah. So let's say you've got, you know, you're making your list of pros and yeah. cons. Okay. What is the thing if they do this, that goes to the the top of the list of pros. And if they do this, this is almost your, it may not be the reason that you say Kryptonite. I can't hire this person, but yes, <laughs> this might be the thing that, Hey, this is the one thing they do this. It's almost going to be impossible for them to get the job <laughs> because of that. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's really important to me when somebody reaches out specifically to me yeah. outside of the job ad, that is going to make them stand out above the crowd, hands down, the single biggest thing they can do, especially if they articulate in that contact what it was specifically that touched them or spoke to them and made them think, this is a great job. I want this job. Yeah. I want to work for this company. That goes so far because that is really when, it, like I said, bookkeeping is just the vehicle to enact my my vision and my mission to have a company that's radically different from corporate America in the way it empowers employees. So if I can't get someone that's on board with that, it's going to be a frustrating process. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's big for me is somebody that gets it. And, and the, any, and just the fact that they took that step, that initiative, that takes initiative. Yeah. It takes guts. It does. It yeah. takes creativity. So just doing that shows that they have a lot of value and a lot of character there that I'm looking for. So that's definitely the biggest thing. Um, on the negative side, that's hard to say. I mean, skill yeah. set is a big one. Um, sure. Technology. I want to say that. I have to have tech savvy people because yeah. so much of what we do is online. Everything we do is web based. I need people that can save documents, can get around our softwares, do our workflows, our checklists, everything that needs to be done. It's all done with technology. So that's probably my single biggest frustration 
you know, which I specifically look for people because in the past, when, before I had my business, that was my frustration with employees that did not get the technology yeah. or they'd rather have things on paper, write things by hand. Not necessarily something wrong with that, but I definitely like people that see the efficiency and are f- super comfortable with technology so they can whip through things and understand it, understand why it's important. Um, handwritten notes are great. I use them too, but I get them into the system and I'm trying now to train myself just create them in the system to begin yeah. with, get away from the paper. But sometimes like in meetings, for example, it would be a little weird for me in a meeting, you know, usually a lunch meeting or something. It'd be a little weird for me to bring my computer out <laughs> next to the salad, you know? <laughs> so there are some circumstances where I still have to rely on handwritten notes, yeah. but yeah. training myself, okay, as soon as I get to my desk, get those notes in the CRM or in the client system or whatever we need it, wherever we need those to be so that they're not just on scratch paper. So I really value people that are tech savvy. So I'd say if anything, that would be the thing where I'm like, okay, this is not going to be a good fit. If if they're going to constantly be frustrated with technology, they're going to be frustrated in this job. Yeah. So I'd say that's the the biggest singular thing I can think of that would just immediately, if you're not yeah. tech savvy, I'm sorry, you're just not going to be happy here. Yeah, <laughs> and I can see how that would be a problem because a, a, a big part of what you do, Lindsay, with Secline is, is that customer satisfaction. Mm-hmm. That's such a big thing. And if technology is a problem, that tells me you're going to have a problem communicating with clients. Yes, and yes. that can lead not only to frustration on your end, as we right. talked about in our episode last week, but frustration on the client side, yes, which is definitely. something that you need to eliminate as, as much as possible. Yes, and, absolutely. And I honestly just think that so many things today have moved the way of technology. Yes. And either it was by their own doing or maybe a lot of it covid kind of ushered them into that was, hey, if you don't have some kind of technology aspect to what you're doing, some way to go virtual or to go online, maybe make something, you know, web based, it it it's time to catch up. Yeah. It's time to catch up. And and I don't blame a lot of people who are didn't grow up that way and it's a hard thing to get into. It it really is. But I, I can totally see how not being tech savvy would cause lots yes. of problems, especially especially when such a big deal is communicating with clients. Yes. Hey, get me this. I need this. Right. That would be a problem. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Definitely need somebody that's proficient on email because we have to email our clients. Mm-hmm. We try to only do it once a week so we're not bugging <laughs> them. But, you know, there are things, either questions we have or documents we need, whatever it yeah. is. So you have to be comfortable with that email process as well as all the technology and software we're using just to get our bookkeeping done for our clients. Yeah. So that's a big one. And that's why I love that test yes. that, <laughs> that I do over Zoom because that'll tell me right there how comfortable they are with technology. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the 411 on my hiring process. Well well this has been huge and if I was looking into hiring, I think you've got a pretty good step-by-step, some kind of template to build off of what you're doing. And one of the things that I take away that might be my biggest takeaway from everything you said is get their skills assessed. Do some kind of skill assessment. Do a personality assessment. That way, you're not just basing everything off of what they've told you because they're going to tell you all the great things and they'll say, Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I know how to email. Oh, yeah. I can email. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I know how to do QuickBooks <laughs> online. Yeah. And then they get in the first day and they go, uh, Lindsay, <laughs> I don't know how to do QuickBooks online. <laughs> yes. So I think that That's might right. be my biggest takeaway is let them show you yes. what they know how to do. That's exactly right. I agree. And make sure it's a good personality fit. Yeah. Do I absolutely. like this person? We're, we spend more time with the people we work with than we do with our families. Mm-hmm. So, Make sure it's someone you like (laughs) that you actually want to hang out with because you're going to be around them a a lot. lot. (laughs) So that's a big one, too. Yep. Yep. (laughs) All right. Well, so tell everyone how they can find you at Free Donation. Yes. Thank you, Lindsay. You can find us online, freedonation.live. We've also got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those things. If you'd like to reach out to me, it's chris at freedonation.live, K-R-I-S. 
FreedomNation.live. And I'm Lindsay Klein with the Klein, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. You can email me at info at sakline.com, S-A-K-L-I-N-E.com. And you also can visit our website at sakline.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Have a great week, everyone. By the Books is presented by Sakline. Honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. For more information on Sakline services or to get a hold of Lindsay, visit sakline.com or email info at sakline.com. The information provided on this website and podcast does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available are for general information purposes only. Information provided by Sakline may not constitute the most up-to-date legal or other information. Listeners should contact their attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter and should refrain from acting on the basis of this information without first seeking legal advice from counsel in the relevant jurisdiction. Only your individual attorney can provide assurances that the information contained herein and your interpretation of it is applicable or appropriate to your particular situation.